Using color checker charts are the best way to ensure that your colors on your photographs are perfect. A good example is product photography, where you work with logos and brands and the colors of the product packaging, and it has to be very accurate and very close to the original. So in these cases, you might not even have an area where you can set your white balance, but even if you have like a white background, you might not be able to set it really accurately. So it's always good to take a picture with a color checker in the background and then using the same settings, take more pictures and you can even take a series of pictures of products with the same lighting and same settings on your camera. That way, you can make sure that once you use the adjustments on the image with the color checker and copy those adjustments onto the other images, your colors will be perfect and you don't have to worry about white balance issues. The way you use a color checker is exactly the same as you would select a, a neutral area on a photograph. So you just use the eyedropper tool and you can click on a middle value, a middle gray value, or use one of these gray values here from this other color checker. Let me just click on this one for now. And you can see it immediately transforms all the colors into the correct way. So now the grays are completely neutral. And thanks to that, the colors will be also accurate. It's completely up to you when you use color checkers. You can use them for portrait photography or landscape photography, but it makes more sense to use it for product photography. But they come in handy whenever you want to ensure that you can get the original colors without having any problems with color shifts. And before we go to the next topic, I just want to show you how to change manually uh, the white balance. Let me switch to another image. And here I'm going to change the temperature. If I move it to the right, I will introduce more warm and yellow colors. While if I move it to the left, I will make it look like London and have it more blue and cool colors. If I change the tint, that can introduce more magenta or more green, depending on which uh, side I'm moving my sliders to. If I double click on a slider, it will always jump back to its original stage. And although it's not white balance, but you also have the option here to change from colored image to black and white. Remember, we have the keyboard shortcut as well, V, but you can always click on black and white or switch back to color here under the treatment option. So that's all you need to know about this area of the basic panel. So we talked about the treatment and the white balance features. And there is one more feature which is good to know about the white balance feature. And that is you can change the S short feature to any of these settings that you would be able to pick from your camera. So for example, you can change it to daylight or cloudy. And basically these features are for different lighting conditions that you can set on your camera but thanks to Lightroom you can also use these later on so if you forgot to change it to something specific uh, when you shot the picture you can always set it later on here in Lightroom as well so for example this one is probably daylight it works the best but I can say change it back to S shot or auto as well and so on and so forth. So once again, completely non-destructive changes. It's up to you which one you use. If you want to use the eyedropper or you want to uh, change the sliders manually or you want to select one of these presets for white balance, it's up to you. The result can be always true to the original colors or be a bit more creative, emphasizing a specific mood that you want to achieve. So that's all what you need to know about the white balance. And in the next topic, we can focus on the tonal adjustments, which is still in here in the basic panel. But these options are just as essential as setting the white balance.